so you want to model some data, do you? It's a good thing that's what this video is about. Today I'm going to show you how to model some data using the LM function in R. And I'm also going to show you why it's so amazing. In fact, I'm thinking about calling this video something like why we need to abandon t-tests or something. That'll really stir some people up. All right, enough yakking. Let's get to my R script. I'm going to start by requiring flexplot, uh, mostly so I can get the Avengers data set. There's going to be another reason I'm going to show you later. Let's say we want to look at the difference in PTSD for those in the north versus the south. Now, normally you'd say, hey, wow, there's two groups. Wow, that means I need to do a t-test. Cool, let's do a t-test, why not? And so to do that, we can use the t.test function in R, and I am saving those results into an object called t-test results. And then if I just highlighted that and then ran that, it will tell me some information. So it's doing a Welch two sample t-test. It gives me a t-statistic with estimated degrees of freedom and a p-value that is well below our magical glorious 0.05 threshold. Sarcasm. Uh, it also gives you a confidence interval and the mean of each group. Yay, hallelujah, that's great, fantastic. We just did a t-test, people. But I could have just as easily, instead of using the t.test function, I could have used the lm function. Let's go ahead and look at that. So here I'm going to create a new object called lm underscore results. And notice that this information is identical to that information. So I'm typing in the same formula, the same data set. And now if I run that code, well, let me make that a little bigger so I can, so if I were to highlight that or go on the line and then run it, it would show me something that is far less informative. Now you might be saying, wait a minute man, you just said LMs are better than T-tests. And yet these are far less informative. By golly, you caught me. You're right. So natively, when you do LM results and return the object, it doesn't give you all that much information. But wait, my friends, there is more. If we were to say summary of LM results, it would give us far more information. And so it gives you stuff that aren't very interesting, like call that basically tells you, hey, here's the R code that you use to generate these results. It also tells you what the residuals are. I usually don't worry about that. Also tells you the coefficients, but if you want your p-values, well, there you go. Look at that, that 2e to the negative 16th. Does that look familiar? Why, yes, it is identical to the p-value we had before with the t-test. And wait, there's more. Look at the t-value, 9.38. If we go up to what we had before, what do we get but negative 9.38? The only difference is negative versus positive. And of course, that's because you're comparing group A to B versus B to A. Doesn't matter, same thing. So we have just used regression to run a t-test and it gives us the same information. Wow, that's cool. I prefer to use LM for just about all of my modeling. And there's three reasons why. Number one, when you do that, variable type doesn't matter. Let me give you an example of that. So if I go back to this t-test, instead of saying PTSD tilde north south, I might do speed. Speed is a numeric variable. It's the number, or it's how fast they run the 40 meter dash or whatever it is. If I try to run that, it's gonna say, error! Grouping factor must have exactly two levels. So there is some error messages built into that that make it so that you have to specify two groups. But if I do the same thing with the LM function, speed, no problems. So that's the primary reason I would say why I prefer to do LMs for t-tests. Second reason is there is one function to rule them all. You don't have to learn a ANOVA function and a t-test function and a regression function. You just have the LM function. You could use that for anything, which is awesome. And then third, the helper functions end up being the same. What do I mean by helper functions? Well, we're going to talk in a minute about visualizing these things and you can visualize any one of those. You can't visualize the t-test. So that's why I prefer to use the LM function. If you wanna find out more information about the linear model approach, then I will leave a link in the description. And if that doesn't convince you, then there's nothing I can do. Except be disappointed. Moving on, but um, there is a problem with this approach. Let's say you're trying to do an ANOVA. 
So I'm going to load the exercise data data set. Uh, again, I think I said in one of my last videos, I, I don't even know if it's necessary to do that, but oh well, it's there anyway. So now we are going to do another linear model where we are um, predicting weight loss from therapy type, or you could also think of it as we're looking at group differences in weight loss. And I'm going to store that as an object. And now if I go summary ANOVA results in my linear model, we get something like that. It's not terribly informative. It looks the same way as it did before, but now you have coefficients. And I'm not gonna go into right now exactly why it displays it like this, because I've already done that in another video. I can link that in the description. Um, and so this isn't all that informative. What you can do if you are looking for traditional p-values and ANOVA summary tables, you can actually do an ANOVA summary table on an LM object. And to do that, we could do the ANOVA function. And look at that, by golly, by goose, we are just rolling in the stats dough. Stats <laughs> dough. Rolling in the stats dough, that's a new one. All right, uh, we got an ANOVA summary table complete with our degrees of freedom, sums of squares, mean squares, F value, nobody knows what any of those means yet we produce them anyway. It also gives you a P value and so that tells you there is some difference somewhere. But there is a better way of doing all this. So rather than using summary to uh, LM objects and getting the coefficients and or using the ANOVA thing and getting the ANOVA summary table, what we really want is we want estimates. We want means. We want mean differences. We want Cohen's D's. We want correlation coefficients, that sort of thing. To do that, we can use a function called estimates, which is available within the Flexplot package. And so if I were to do estimates on my LM results, so that would be my regression results, I end up getting something that looks like this. You've got a model R squared of 0.02, which is pretty lame, semi-partial. We're not gonna worry about that now. You got a correlation coefficient of 0.04, and it also gives you your intercept and your slope. Nice. Now, if I do that with the ANOVA results, we get something far more informative than we had before. We got still model R squared, or I guess you would call it an eta squared in this situation. We got a semi-partial, but we also have the means for each of the groups, which is really, really informative. So we got the mean for the control group, the mean for the behaviors group, the mean for the cognitive group, and it also gives every single pairwise difference, the mean difference between them as well as Cohen's D. So that's probably a much better way of doing it. Now, you might be saying, man, It'd be really, really cool if I could just see the data. Man, that would be awesome, man! And I couldn't agree with you more! So how do we do that? We could, again, use Flexplot to do that. And so we're gonna use the visualize function. So if we were to do visualize lm underscore results, we would get something that looks like this. Make, actually, let's make that bigger. I'm gonna click on that zoom button and then make that humongous. There we go, so we see a scatter plot, and we also see some basic diagnostic plots. Those are cool. I'm not gonna go into what those mean and how to interpret those yet, because um, I've already done that, and I'll show you, and I'll leave a link in the description for doing that. Um, but maybe instead of having diagnostics, you want just the model, and so you can do that by specifying plot equals model, which will just show you a plot of the model. And if we compare that with the estimates, that looks cool. Um, we might also we could also visualize the ANOVA results and this time I'm just going to default to saying plot equals model because I don't want the diagnostics for that right now and we get bee swarm plots and so we can see that the cognitive and the behaviorist group are about the same and they are higher than the control group and if we were to compare that information with the estimates uh, what do we see? The estimates say that the control group has an average of 0.413 and would you look at that? By golly, that dot right there is about a 4.13. Well, actually, it's exactly a 4.13. Those two will align perfectly and they will always and forever because Flexplot is amazing. So that is a very, very, very brief intro on using LMs and yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Let's go ahead and review our learn objectives, eh? Number one, the three reasons we should favor using LMs over t-tests or ANOVAs for modeling. And again, reason one is we don't have to worry about whether the predictor variable is categorical or numeric. LMs handle it either way. Number two, we have one function to rule them all. 
which is just LM. We don't have to worry about remembering t-test and ANOVA and regression. We just remember one function. And then number three, the helper functions. In this case, that's gonna be estimates and visualize, and I'll introduce you to some other functions. Also, all those helper functions are gonna work on an LM object. So the process of investigating data is identical, regardless of whether you're doing a t-test, an ANOVA, regression, whatever. So number two, know how to use LM to fit any of these. And I showed you examples again, you just specify what your dependent variable is, tilde, and then your independent variable, and then you're good. Number three, understand the difference between the functions summary, ANOVA, estimates, and visualize. Again, summary, summary is a generic function that will give you some sort of a summary for LMs that are not all that helpful, which is where you get to estimates, which are helpful. It will give you means, mean differences, correlation coefficients, coins, Ds, slopes, intercepts, all that good stuff. And then the, the ANOVA function will give you p-values and an ANOVA summary table for whatever model you're looking at. And then visualize. Visualize is a flexplot function that in the background automates a visual presentation of the model that you're trying to fit. Man, that was easy. Hope you had fun. I had fun. See you next time. Peace out.